everyone and welcome back to my channel Rachel Ray here and today we have another installment of the children's stories from A Child's Treasury of Irish Stories and Poems by Gillian Macmillan. If you're interested in this book I will link it down in the description below. If you're interested in watching or listening to all the stories in order from beginning to end please check out the playlist here on my YouTube channel. Without any further ado, let's get started with the story of the Giant's Causeway. Finn and his wife Una lived in their castle by the sea in County Antrim. One day a stranger arrived. It was a messenger from Scotland, a country across the sea. I bring a challenge from the mighty Angus, the messenger said. He is the tallest, strongest, and most fearsome giant in all of Scotland. He has heard about your great strength and wants to fight you. Angus has beaten all the other giants, and you're the only one remaining. Do you accept the challenge? Of course I accept, said Finn. I'll begin to prepare immediately. And so he did. From that day on, Finn worked hard. He had decided to build a path across the sea to Scotland. It was a rather unusual causeway, made up of hundreds of thousands of black rocks, all different sizes and different heights. Some rocks had six sides, some eight, and other more than ten sides. The warriors of the Fianna looked on in amazement as Finn worked each day. Before long, the causeway was stretched miles into the sea. One evening, when Finn returned home, he noticed that Una was worried. What's the, wor what's the matter, he asked. Oh, Finn, she replied. I heard some very disturbing news today. I heard that Angus is indeed much bigger than you and that he's definitely stronger. Well, if I cannot beat him with my strength, then we must think of a plan, Finn said. I may not be as big or as strong as he is, but I'm much cleverer. Finn and Una talked for many hours. They thought of many plans but could not find one that they were sure to work. Time was running out. Later that week, the messenger from Angus returned and told Finn that Angus would arrive in two days' time. Tell him that Finn is ready and waiting, said Una. Do not worry, Finn. I have a plan in mind. Una worked hard for the next two days. She spent the time cutting and sewing and knitting. Imagine sewing and knitting at a time like this he exclaimed. I thought you had a plan. Look carefully, said Una. What do you see? Finn was amazed. Clothes, he said. I see clothes, but they are most peculiar. Never mind that, said Una. Just put them on. What a sight Finn was. He wore a long dress. On his feet he had a pair of giant brogines, or booties and Una had knitted a beautiful bonnet for his head. While you were working, I asked Fergus to make a very large cradle. In you get, she said. We have no time to lose. Angus was approaching. As he walked, the ground shook. Where is the mighty Finn? I have traveled all the way from Scotland to fight him. Is he afraid to meet me? Una opened the door. Please come in. You're very welcome. Finn is hunting and won't be very long. But please, sir, could you speak a little softer? Our new baby is asleep. That is your baby? Angus gasped in shock. Yes, he's rather small now, but he will grow, replied Una. Angus was frightened. He had never seen a baby this big. If this is Finn's small baby, what size is Finn? He wondered. Finn himself must be enormous. Angus hurried out, and without turning, he ran across the causeway. As he was running, a thought struck him. What if Finn is following me? To prevent this happening, he began to remove stones from the path. By the time he arrived home to Scotland, all that was left was just a few yards of the path jutting out from the coast of Antrim into the sea. To this day, only that part of the causeway remains. 
Next we have a story called the Salmon of Knowledge. Long ago in Ireland, the king had a special army of soldiers called the Fianna to guard him. Cool was their most famous leader. His enemies were jealous of him, so they killed him. Cool's wife was afraid that her young son Finn might also be killed. So she took him to two women, two women warriors, who lived on the slopes of the Sleeve Bloom Mountains. She asked the women to teach the young boy all that a son of Cool should know, for she knew that someday her son would become one of the Fianna. At that time, any youth wishing to join the Fianna had to pass very difficult tests. He had to defend himself against the spears of nine men using only a shield. He had to jump over a pole as high as his head, and he had to recite 12 books of poetry. When the women had taught Finn all the fighting skills he'd need, they sent him to Finnegus the poet to learn the 12 books of poetry. Finnegus lived on the banks of the river Boyne. He'd spent many years living beside this river and fishing in it. There was a fish in the Boyne known as the Salmon of Knowledge. The person who caught it and ate it would know everything there was to know in the world. Finnegus liked the young, fair-haired Finn and agreed to become his teacher. One day, as Finn was learning poetry, he heard a shout. He rushed to the river, and there stood Finnegas, holding a large salmon. Please take the fish and cook it for me. Remember, you must not eat any of it. Finn did as he was told. He cleaned the salmon, lit the fire, and put the salmon over the fire to cook. All was well until a blister rose on the side of the salmon. Without thinking, Finn reached out and broke the skin of the blister. In doing so, he burnt his thumb and he sucked it to stop the pain. He finished cooking the fish as Finnegas returned. The old man looked at Finn and saw in his eyes the knowledge he had spent so many years searching for. There is nothing for me to teach you now, he said sadly. You must go to Tara and take your father's place at the head of the Fianna. Always use your knowledge wisely. Finn set off at once to join the Fianna. From then on, whenever he had a problem, all he had to do was put his thumb in his mouth, and he had the answer at once. Our last story today is called The Magic Cloak. It was almost dawn. Both sea and land were covered in mist. Owen hid behind the rock as the tide ebbed far out in the bay. He had been waiting a long time for this special day. Every seven years, a very strange magical event happened. The old people in the village said that the sea went out as far as the horizon and the fairy people appeared. They spread a magic cloak in the center of the sands and this held back the tide. Whoever owned the cloak could order the sea to stay back and would have good fertile land to make a farm. Owen always listened carefully to the stories of the old people, especially this one. Seven years earlier, he had crept out and watched in amazement as the waves rolled back and the fairy people appeared. This time, he waited with his horse tethered nearby. At dawn they came. Owen could hear the music of the fiddles and harps. Through the mist, he could barely make out shadows. Slowly, he got on his horse, making sure not to startle the animal. The mist lifted, and once again Owen saw the strangest sight before his eyes. The sea and sand had disappeared, and in its place was a green plain as far as he could see. Owen knew what to do. He had to get the magic cloak, and the land would be his. But the cloak was guarded by leprechauns. He soon spotted them sitting in a circle, a pile of tiny shoes at their feet, tapping in time to the music. They were sitting on the cloak, and the edges were flapping in the breeze. Owen pulled gently on the reins of his horse as they moved forwards. It took him longer than he expected to reach the cloak. When he looked back, it seemed that the shoreline was a very far distance away. As he came near to the leprechauns, he slowed his horse and then dismounted a short distance away. He crept forward. He thought that they must hear his heart thumping or the sound of his breathing, but no, they continued to work. He reached out and, taking hold of a corner of the cloak, he pulled it out from under them. 
Without delay, he threw the cloak on his back, mounted his horse, and galloped toward the shore. He could hear the chaos and confusion behind him, but he dared not to look back. Suddenly, all was quiet. It was an eerie quiet. The breeze dropped. I've made it, Owen thought. Then he heard a rumbling noise. He looked over his shoulder, and moving towards him with terrific speed was a gigantic wave. It was the fairy wave. Owen urged his horse on, but he was swept from the saddle. He felt as though he was being pulled in many directions and beaten by many pairs of hands. As quickly as it had come, the wave disappeared. When Owen woke and tried to move, every bone and muscle in his body ached. I've survived the fairy wave, he thought. I have the magic cloak. I can control the sea. I'll be rich. I'll have beaten the fairies. I don't mind this pain. He put his hand on his back to feel the cloak. But instead, all he felt was a cloak of seaweed. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the Irish Stories for Children. If you're interested in listening to more stories from Ireland, please stay tuned or check out my playlist for the next video in the series. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.